We want to talk about schedules now and how we can use our 3D objects and elements in our drawing to be able to create schedules. We're going to use the lighting and the electrical plan in order to understand this the most because it's a fairly small project. It's the only thing that really has enough quantities to justify. So when we're drawing a, a lighting plan, it's based up of, it could be two dimensional elements, but the problem with the two dimensional elements such as a line or a fill or a circle is it's not going to quantify very well. It's not going to be able to create a schedule. So if we use objects, so ceiling ventilator or ceiling fan, uh, we have other symbols. It doesn't necessarily even need to be the right thing. So this one's called pendant lamp 22 and I'm using it as a, a pendant lamp. So that's, that's quite good. This one's called a wall lamp and I'm showing it as a wall lamp, so that's good. This one here is called Break Contact 22, but I'm using it as a, um, a ceiling, sorry, a bathroom heat lamp and fan. So I'm not using it as it's meant to be, but it still serves the purpose. We see this one's a range hood. Now this isn't necessarily lighting. Uh, we can get a range hood that has lighting in it. it, doesn't have to be. So in this case, it's representing here, but it's not actually probably supposed to be there. Instead, maybe we should put it onto another layer called ceiling mechanical fixtures. What else? And we have the switching. And in this case, ArchiCAD creates different objects for a, a switch that is three gang or four gang, two and one. So we've got different objects that are creating these. There's the, there's the single one there. And so we call this one is called switch one pole 22 and switch three pole 22. So they're different objects, not one object that we can then change the amount of poles on them. And that's sort of helpful because that means it makes it easier for us to quantify. So we could, how? We could quantify these by counting them. So we go around the plan and count them up and then we write that in a legend and put it at the top of the page. But that's not a really BIM idea. That's very two-dimensional, that's very drafting, it's very manual. So on a small project that might be easy, but as the projects get larger that becomes unjustified and undesirable. Instead what we want to do is to create a schedule. And so ArchiCAD gives us the ability to do this. Generally down the bottom we have schedules as elements and as components. And you'll see that depending on the way that you're setting it up, sometimes elements are the best and sometimes components are the best. And that's really based on what categories you can search. So when I go to my lighting, it looks strange at the moment because it's zoomed in too far. Let's change this to 50% just so we can see it all in one go. Some of these are customized or customizable so we can change the, the text of the heading, lighting schedule. Some of them are based on settings or scheme settings. So in this case, we can see that we've got a scheme setting which includes element ID, library part, quantity, and I've changed the, the way that that's represented. It was written as quantity and I rewrote it to QTY just to take up less space. And the home story, so where we find that. And so when we go to scheme settings, we can see that we break up our scheme settings into criteria and fields. What does this mean? Criteria is what elements are going to show, what elements are going to represent, or what is being scheduled. So what is being scheduled in this case is lamps and objects. Why two of them? Because we can see that when we're talking about in ArchiCAD, our lamps are things that are the lamp tool under more, and our objects are our object tool. So we need to be able to actually have in our criteria both of those because for our lighting schedule we want both of those. So the lights, the lamps includes the pendants and the down lights and the wall lights and the objects in this case is the switches and some other things. And of course we also want to be able to use our criteria of our layer. So I have a lot of objects but I actually only want the type of objects that are being used to be my overlay lighting. So that means only the lighting objects are visible. The next thing that we want to do, so these are all the things that are visible, and then what do we want to find out about these elements? We want to know their element ID, their library part name, their quantity, 
and their home story name. So let's close that, press OK, and we can see here this is what they are. We also can, if it's not already, select Merge Uniform Item. So if I don't click that, we see that the quantity just turns to one, and it's a very, very long list. Now in terms of a schedule or a bill of quantities, it's not really helpful if it lists every instance without actually adding them up quantifying them. So we want to say merge uniform items so everything that's the same name will actually be represented showing their true quantity not list them once only. Now that would mean that here for instance we have pendant 1 or pendant A, pendant A, pendant A, pendant A, pendant A. We've, we have to change our element ID so that it's got different IDs for different library part names. So these are more manually adjusted and these are automated. We see that we can't change that. So this is text, this is a library part name, and this is based on a story. So we can't change these three, but we can change the element ID to a better name. So we can change the name. We can call this ceiling fan. And of course we can duplicate that one for there. This is a pendant, so we'll call it pendant A. This is a recessed spot, so we'll call this downlight. Not download. Downlight. And we'll copy that and we'll do the same name. So we should basically have two of each. And of course this one, what is our break contact? We talked about that already. That is a heat and fan. And again, the element ID is basically just to help us understand what it is. The actual um, name is not that important. And then we've got the switch gangs. This is pretty obvious. The ones that I'm missing here is the four. So they're all called one, two, three. They're not really done very well at the moment. So we need to change these to the match. And the point is that once we've done this well, we don't have to redo it every time. We only have to do this once per story. Now we could get rid of the story if we wanted to and then it, that would do it for the whole project but it probably makes sense to break it up. Again, so we, we should only have a few of these each. Alright, that's all we need to do. Now, do I want to see the library part name? Not really. All I really need to see in my schedule in terms of explaining it to somebody else is my element ID, my quantity, and my home story. So therefore, how do we do this? Do I hide my library part name? I could, or another way of doing that would just be to move it to the bottom. So I can take my library part name, move it to the bottom, press OK, and that means the first three are the ones that I want to see, and then this other last one I can hide. So when I go to my layout, that will automatically update and we see it's now reduced its size as well because it didn't need to show unnecessary elements and then I can just reduce this down to that and now that's all I need to show in order to be able to explain this. Now what am I missing? The only thing that I am missing is my symbols. So I would need to be able to represent the symbol which I can add in here as well. How would I do that? So I now need to add in another scheme. So again, this is what I'm explaining of these elements. So I need to explain, add a field, the symbol. And so I need to add in what options do we have? Object and lamp. What do we want to see? There's not a lot of options here. There's a 3D view. We could add that in, but in some cases we're not talking about a 3D element, we're talking about a, a 2D element. So we can search, we could say top, and we can see that it could be top surface, we could type in plan, and we might be able to see a general 2D plan preview. So something like that is probably the best in this instance, so we'll add that in. Where do I want that to sit? I probably want that to sit at the top. Okay. What's the problem? It's going to make my drawing a little bit messy, which now means I either need to be okay with it overlapping like this, or I need to 
increase the size so that it's not creating that overlap. Now I don't need it to be red, I can change that if I want to. Uh, the reason why it's red is because, as you would have seen in my plan, there we go, it's a bit nicer. Now we need to update this and extend that down. Great. We can see here that we're using red to be able to make it visible on the plan. Now, of course, we could change that to black and it should still be able to do its job. Um, I was just keeping it red to make it really visible. And that'll, of course, once we change it from red to black, will automatically update again. So that's schedules. That's how we do that for lighting. Let's have a quick look at how we might do that for electrical. With electrical, um, we again need to add in the scheme, so add in the criteria, sorry. So let's go add fields, we'll call that plan, we'll call that 2D plan preview add. We'll add that, bring that to the front. So that now shows the symbol, we'd have to change the pen type of that, but we can do that later. And this, in this case, it's similar. So we've got a legend. In this case, it's the name. And we could change that to give that an ID, just like we did with the lighting quantity, story. And again, we see that's merged uniform cells. Let's go back to the electrical. And that will update as well. Now the beauty of a schedule like this is that we'll update. Just meaning that if we make changes to the 3D model, to the BIM model, those changes will automatically be reflected here. And of course, not only is it uh, a nice legend, does its job, but it also is BIM data, which means it can be exported. We can go to any of these and file save as. We can save this as a, an Excel workbook and we could export that and therefore use that to give to an electrician possibly or give to a builder to be able to use in their BIM data and of course as a contractor that's how we can use Archicad and that's why Archicad works well as a BIM program because it allows for that interchange of information between the product sorry between the project team